Welcome to FSA Lecture 5, Part F, Ratio Demonstration. At the end of the lecture slides, there's a quick example that you can look through on how to take your reformatted profit and loss statement here, and a reformatted balance sheet here, and do some ratio calculations. We've got three questions for you to practice. The first one is to calculate your return on equity. To calculate your return on equity, you can first use the simple return on equity formula, which is ROE is equal to your net profit divided by your average owner's equity. So if you go back, you look at your reformatted profit and loss statement, and you take your net profit or net income, and you divide through by the average owner's equity. Owner's equity could also be called book value. Okay, Average means the current year plus the previous year divided by two. So we take our net profit here, divided by our average owner's equity. Then we're asked to calculate return on net operating assets. And then for the third part, break down return on equity into the advanced DuPont formula. Profit margin times asset turnover plus financial leverage times spread, which is RNOA minus NBC, net borrowing cost. For our second question, RNOA, we can calculate NOPAT, net operating profit after tax, divided by average net operating assets. So RNOA stands for return on net operating assets. It's similar to a normal return on assets calculation, except we're using the reformatted financial statements. So we take net operating profit after tax, NOPAT, and we divide through by our average net operating assets. Current year's net operating assets plus previous year's net operating assets, divide it by two to get average NOA. NOPAT over NOA is our return on net operating assets. And then the final question, supply the numbers for the following formula. This is using the advanced DuPont analysis. I'll leave these to calculate for yourself as some practice, but we've got the, the answers that you'll need there. Profit margin times asset turnover, that's going to equal our return on net operating assets, plus financial leverage times spread, that will show us the effect of financing on our return on equity. We add up the effect of operations and the effect of financing and we'll get return on equity. It's going to equal 33.78, which is exactly the same as when you did it the simple way. So the overall return on equity calculation doesn't change when you do advanced DuPont analysis compared to the simple ROE calculation. But what does change is you get an understanding of what is the part of the business that's driving the returns. Is it the operations or is it the financing effect? Next up, I'm going to quickly show you Gale Pacific in Excel. So last week, I reformatted Gale Pacific's financial statements in Excel. This week, I've just calculated the advanced DuPont analysis ratios. That is, I've done the ROE calculation after calculating profit margin, asset turnover, financial leverage, and spread. So let's have a look at Excel, and we can quickly go through. This is my Gale Pacific spreadsheet. In this spreadsheet, we started with it last week. I first started by just entering in the financial statement information to Excel from the balance sheet and income statement. We can ignore those tabs this week because I'm going to be focusing on the reformatted balance sheet and the reformatted income statement. So remember the reformatted balance sheet here, I've calculated my current operating assets, non-current operating assets, current operating liabilities, and non-current operating liabilities. I've added up my operating assets minus my operating liabilities to come up with net operating assets. I've then done something similar for the financing section. I've added up my financing assets, which this business didn't have any financing assets, so I've left it all as zeros. If your business has financing assets, you'll have some there. And the financing liabilities. And I've calculated net financial obligations. So I'm assuming most businesses are going to have net financial obligations. The liabilities from their financing activities will be larger than the assets. So I've taken the sum of my financing liabilities minus off the sum of the financing assets there to get net financial obligations. The reformatted income statement, I've got my operating section up here and I've calculated net operating profit after tax. Then down here, I've got my financing section and I've calculated net financial expense after tax. If you need to remember how to calculate this, look at last week's video and look at the reformatted spreadsheet to see how that's been done. We're now going to focus on these reformatted financial statements to do the ratio analysis. We're going to do the advanced DuPont analysis. 
So, so the main thing that we need to look at for our advanced DuPont analysis is the operating section and the financing section. Then we're going to add up the effects of the operating profits and the financing activities to calculate return on equity. The operating ratios, we started with profit margin. Profit margin equals no PAT divided by sales revenue. So let's have a look at 2019. I've got the formula here, no PAT divided by sales revenue. If I click on the cell, I've got equals, reformatted income statement and the cell that it's in divided by the sum of the sales revenue. Now I'm summing up the two sales revenue accounts and here I've put, I've included both the sales revenue and other revenue. So let's see what I've done. Pro no pat over sales revenue. I'm going to my reformatted income statement and for the formula, I've gone no pat. Okay, so I've taken this cell and I've divided by the sum of these two cells. So I've added up both of my revenue accounts here. So the profit margin is my operating profit divided by my operating sales. And the profit margin is an important ratio to be able to calculate because it gives us an idea for every dollar of sales this business makes, what do they actually keep after, after paying off all their different expenses? Now, this is a high level number. It tells us overall the business has had a profit margin that for three years was relatively stable, but something went wrong in 2017. So we'll have to have a look at that later and figure out why Gale Pacific had such a bad um, profit margin in 2017. Then we have a look at the asset turnover ratio. The asset turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by average net operating assets. So this time I'm taking a number from my income statement, sales, and if I'm taking a number from the balance sheet, net operating assets, then we always have to take an average of the balance sheet account if we're comparing it to an income statement account. Sales is measured over a year, but Net operating assets would either be today's value or last year's value. So we take an average, so we get a measure of net operating assets over the year to compare it to sales for the year. So the formula for 2019, I've said I'm taking, so equals the sum of the reformatted income statement for both these sales, E5 and E6. That is, I'm taking both the sales revenue and the other revenue account here as my overall sales revenue, my total sales revenue, and I'm dividing by average NOA. So I've used the function in Excel average, and then I've selected D32 and E32 from my reformatted balance sheet. D32 and E32, I'm averaging my 2019 net operating assets and my 2018 net operating assets. That is my average NOA. And I divided my sales by average NOA. Now I've put a little note, I have not calculated asset turnover in 2016. The reason for that is I've only done reformatting for four years. If I wanted to calculate 2016's asset turnover, I would need to have 2015 uh, NOA to calculate the average NOA. And I haven't done the reformatting for 2015, so I can't calculate average NOA in 2016. So I've left the 2016 column blank for the rest of it because some of those ratios I can't calculate without going back and getting the 2015 data as well. Okay, so what we've done here is we've done the profit margin and the asset turnover ratio. When you multiply the profit margin and asset turnover ratio together equals this cell times this cell, I get the return on net operating assets. So overall, Gale Pacific over the last three years, because I couldn't calculate 2016, 2018 and 2019, their return on assets was between 8 and 10%, which is a pretty successful business. That's doing pretty well. But in 2017, we had that loss, which was driven by the negative profit margin there. Their asset turnover ratio in 2017 was still pretty good. It's actually the best of the three years, but they made a loss in 2017. If we have a quick look at the numbers for 2017, okay, overall, they've made a loss. They had this really big impairment. Now, when you're doing your profit margin calculations, you can break the profit margin down. Instead of just having this overall business level profit margin, you can break down the, um, the numerator here can be each of the expense items. So you can see how the expense items as a percentage of sales revenue have changed each year. If you did that for 2017, you would see that the impairment expense here is what caused Gale Pacific to have a massive loss. When you're doing your assignment and further analysis, you'd want to think about, is this actually going to help us with our forecasting? We want to know what did they actually impair? 
if we look at their balance sheet, they used to have a lot of intangibles and then the intangibles dropped down by about 17 million in 2017. So they've impaired or reduced the value of their intangibles by 17 million. That's caused this impairment expense and that has caused our profit margin to go negative because they've made a loss. We want ratios to help us with our forecasting. So you'd have to think about, is this impairment likely to happen again? What would the profit margin look like if we removed that from the analysis? As a very simple and rough way of looking at the effect of this impairment, because we're not expecting the impairments to be something that happen in a recurring fashion each year, if you wanted to know how did Gale Pacific actually perform outside of this impairment, if I go back to my income statement, and I'm going to imagine, imagine they didn't have this impairment this year, how did the rest of the business go? So I'm just going to quickly change this cell to zero, and then my ratios will update. So their profit margin was about 6%, so reasonably similar to the other years. The thing that ruined their performance for the year was that massive impairment. So I'm going to turn that back to how it was. We're going to put the impairment back there, leave our ratios as they are. Okay, so now you can start getting an understanding of what caused the performance to dip in that particular year. Next, we're going to look at the financing activities of the business to see if the financing activities actually had a positive effect on the business's return on equity. So when we look at the financing ratios, we first calculate financial leverage, which we abbreviate to FLEV or FLEV. Financial leverage is the average net financial obligations, and we're going to get that from our reformatted balance sheet divided by the average owner's equity. Again, we can take that from our reformatted balance sheet. So in 2019, the formula I've used, I've said equals average from the reformatted balance sheet. I've taken the two cells, the 2019 and 2018 NFO, and then I've divided through by the average and the two cells from the average owner's equity. So if I look at my reformatted balance sheet, I've taken my average NFO for 2019 and 2018 and divided through by my average equity for 2019 and 2018. So Gale Pacific has had their financial leverage fluctuate from between 30 to 40%. Most companies, as you do their ratios, you'll find that they generally keep their financing levels reasonably steady throughout their history. And it might fluctuate in a single year or so if they go to the bank or the bond market and borrow some money. So this, these two years were very steady. Then they've obviously gone and borrowed some more money in 2019. And you'd want to look into the financial statements and see what they've borrowed, why, if there's any disclosure about what they were using that money for, because that could then give you an idea if this is good. We could have a quick look at the reformatted balance sheet there, and their current borrowings went up by about 10 million in 2019. Okay, so it would be good to, when you're doing the analysis, to figure out why did they have to go and get this extra $10 million loan? What are they going to be using that $10 million for? Okay. So we've seen a spike in the financial leverage. It corresponds to an increase in their short-term borrowings. Go look at the financial statements, see if managers have talked about why they've done this and if it makes sense. The next ratio we need to calculate is NBC or the net borrowing cost. The net borrowing cost is the interest expense, NFEAT, which is from our reformatted income statement. Then we divide through by the average net financial obligations. So for 2019, NFEAT, that's going to be from our reformatted income statement. We've got the cell reference. Then I divide through by the average of the NFO, which is from my reformatted balance sheet. The simple way of understanding NBC or net borrowing cost, NFEAT is the amount of interest you've paid after tax. Average NFO is the average amount you have borrowed. So the amount of interest you paid divided by the amount you have borrowed allows you to calculate essentially the interest rate you pay on your debt. So net borrowing cost, an easier way to think about it is what interest rate are you paying on your debt? So Gale Pacific are paying about 3.6% on their, on their debt. And we know interest rates are pretty low at the moment and 3.6% sounds very, very much in the ballpark for what a company would be paying on their borrowings at the moment. We then have to look at the spread. Spread is equal to RNOA minus NBC. Return on net operating assets, which is what we've calculated up here, is our profit margin times our asset turnover. The return we're actually generating on our operations minus NBC, which we just calculated here, is our interest rate. So spread is the difference between the return your operating assets are actually generating minus the interest rate you're paying to the bank. 
We want to have a positive spread. If spread is negative, it indicates that the money you are borrowing, you're generating a lower return than the interest you have to pay and destroying value. So in 2019, we take R and OA, and I've calculated it here, and I minus the net borrowing cost, which I've calculated up above. So I've got equals this cell here for R and OA minus this cell here for net borrowing costs. It's positive. That means the money that Gale Pacific have borrowed and invested, they've generated an 8% return on their assets, and they're only paying the bank 3.66% interest. So for every dollar they're borrowing, they're generating an 8.4% return, having to give the bank 3.66%, and they're getting to keep 4.7% from that transaction. So the amount they've borrowed here, even though it's increased, they've got a positive spread, so it's creating more value in terms of increasing the return on equity for this business. Okay, so now return on equity. We always start with the simple return on equity calculation. Net profit divided by average owner's equity for 2019. I've gone back to the original income statement and balance sheet here just to show that even though we've done our reformatting, everything still equals out all right. All right. So I've taken net profit from my income statement. So if I look back here at my income statement, net profit for 2019, then I divide through by my balance sheet, the average total equity for 2019 and 2018, and I come up with 10.35%. Then I wanna calculate return on equity using my advanced DuPont analysis, and it comes up with the exact same answer. It has to come up with the same answer because we're calculating the same thing. But now we've broken it down into profit margin times asset turnover, plus the financial leverage we have times the spread we're generating. You could do it a third way if you wanted just to make sure everything's working out fine. We could say RNOA equals, sorry, ROE equals RNOA plus financial leverage times spread. So when we do our calculations, it often gives us, it'll often come up like this with first time you're using it. To make sure our calculations always look neat, things like return indicates it's a percentage. So in Excel, we can format it. You can click up here, go to percentage, or you generally have a little shortcut so I can turn it into percent and a couple of decimal places 